Let's get to our Euro 2024 power rankings. We're going to put you to the task as we always do here. Let's get your top five in the power rankings. I don't know which way you want to go. Which way would you prefer to go, Jan? Is your top? Uh, I'll go for the top. I, I, I've i written it down and, of course, uh, I can't see it. Uh, <laughs> well, definitely uh, what your favourite is then? Uh, I'm going to go France, number one. Right. I'm going to get... I'm, go, I'm going to... I'm sorry? Let's oh, do you want me to read it all or, or pick your spots or you want me to go no, one no, by tell one? Tell me why France is number one. Well, I just think they're the best team. I mean, you know, we saw, you know, I saw, uh, I was there at the final and the whole, you know, World Cup. I, I, I saw the two, three deep in every position, even though yesterday, you know, even their under 23s were great, but the United States somehow drew at the end 2 2, I saw, and, and they're friendly, by the way, they play in the Olympics. But anyway, um, um, I had to throw the US uh, into it. My apologies. Um, but it's just an excellent team. Uh, and, I, and I think that they're overall favorites, regardless of what happens, uh, what happened in the last game. And and I'll throw it to you because I put Germany as my number two, which surely will shock you probably. Well, it's actually interesting that you say that because they are up there when it comes to the favorites. I think it's like France and England are tied for favorites. Germany are pretty much high up on the list as well. Obviously, they've got... Well, I I mean, I can't, I can't imagine that Germany were on anybody's list, right? That they game actually are the odds makers. We read it out the other day on, on ESPN FC, and they're pretty high. And obviously, that in itself causes... Because they beat friends. A lot of because topics. they beat but friends. This was before that, Janish? This was before No, that. no, I don't buy it. No, I don't believe it. Look at the odds makers. They're pretty high up. And obviously, there must be that feeling that because of the home nation, that's going to help them. But you're saying, no, you don't believe it. So that France game has changed your mind then. It did. It did. I mean, there's a couple of indications, you know, we, we, you know, for me, I've always felt that they had a great, uh, uh, great talent. I always thought that there's needs to be a manager here, here. Nagelsmann comes in and does a very good job. It took him a little bit, but of course he doesn't have the opportunities that you have at, at, at the, uh, 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 club level, obviously Tony Cross, everybody saw it right. Coming out of retirement after three years, as if, He's never left, right? Uh, we didn't think that Florian Wirtz and and uh, and Jamal Michala could, could play together because they're very similar to the way they play. Uh, look at that; they didn't have Leroy Zane. I like the fact that they, you know, even even you know uh, Kai Havertz, even though he's not, not number nine at a club level and country level, he's finally showing uh, what we once saw at Leverkusen before everything that happened to him uh, at Chelsea and in the beginning at, at Arsenal. I like their plan B uh, with full Krug. I often talk about other uh, um, national teams where they don't have that true number nine, that what I would call even a little bit of a bruiser, great in the air, pretty soft feet for a big man, but who can kind of use his elbows and make sure that he holds on to the possession. Uh, in that game against France, we didn't see Leroy Zane, who's been much, much better uh, in the last season as well. So, I mean, I think the depth is there. There, You know, I look at somebody like Ter Stegen and, and Neuer, you know, what a one-two. Everybody would love to have that. Jonathan Ta is becoming a good player. Rudiger, uh, I think everybody, you know, starting to understand that what, uh, you know, what makes him good. Because, you know, when he was at Chelsea, kind of this chaotic type of player. At Germany, he's always played the part. Obviously, Real Madrid, look at him. That didn't phase him in any way. So I always felt that Germany were out there. Maybe I was afraid to say it in that spell when they were uh, not so good, but I just felt it's not going to take much. This is not an absolute rebuild. So I don't buy it that people had him up there. I think the French game shouldn't probably change that opinion, but it did. And in, in my opinion, uh, it showed. By the way, France was, was very, very good uh, in the first half. That game could have gone uh, totally differently. And that's why France is still my uh, so number you, one. It's interesting that you say that's where your mind changed on Germany because you seem to have, it's like you say, you must have been holding it in what you actually think about Germany because you seem to make some really valid and good points about Germany that you could take away that France game and it'd all still be just as valid. And maybe that's why they're high up with the books, uh, the bookmakers. Um, that's one and two. Who's three? Uh, three. I'm gonna. Hmm, I'm gonna give this to Portugal. Uh, look, I look at that team, and and you show me another nation that that has the talent that they have. Now, talent's not everything. I understand. Uh, you know, we've had. Uh, 
couple of golden generations uh, already, you know, one that didn't come out at first, right? And later on, they won the uh, European championships. But I mean, this is just a, a, a tremendous, a tremendous. I mean, look, I think they've won the last 11 games, right? Every since Mar since Martinez took over, he's won every game. Now you look at who's they played. Okay, not the world beaters, but you still have to do that. You you still have to be able to do it. It's still some pressure because there were Nations League qualifiers, whatever they were. You know, the last result against Sweden, who are not maybe at their best, but you know, it's five two. It doesn't matter who you beat. You still have to do. You still have to do it. Here I am sitting, you know, uh, waiting for Poland to play Wales in a group that they didn't come out of. That had you know the uh, Moldova, uh, uh, Albania, and Faroe Islands, and they didn't come out of that group. Strange things do happen. So I'm going to give, uh, you know, Martinez his due and Portugal. They're an absolutely excellent th uh, team. And I think that if things go well uh, for them, there's no drama early in the group stage. I think this is a team you better watch out for. So I'm going to give him benefit of the doubt because, I, you know, strength in numbers in these tournaments. And you have to rotate. You have to make substitutions. And, you know, I look at their bench. I mean, the starting line, of, who knows what that may be, but... Oof, there, there's some talent there that can change games on the spot. So that's my number three. Okay. And just to give you the ESPN bet uh, odds, England, France, Germany, and Portugal and Spain are all in the top five of the Euro 2024 odds. I, I didn't know that. I didn't look at any of it, by the way. No, it's fine. It's because it was on my show the other night. And, it, and as you said, it could be a surprise that when you said Germany, it obviously caused a good talking point and a debate point straight away. As to as to why they are up there, they're, 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 they're hosts, by the way, too. Exactly. I, you know, it's probably worth mentioning. And so that's that's probably massively going in their favour too when it comes to the bookies. So you've done one, two, and three. Who's number four? I was fighting between Spain and England. I'm going to give I'm going to give Spain slight benefit of the doubt, even though they're young. You know, this is maybe not the Spain that we once uh, uh, knew that were, you know, winning the World Cup and European Championships back to back and then some. Uh, but it's a young team that I think is going to have a little bit less pressure on them. I don't think it's Spain. Spain is uh, looked upon uh, as the Spain of all. It's like, you know, these guys are there, one or two. I think in a way it will help them. Uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, I didn't put them in the spot that that I'm used to, but I, I think there's slightly bit. I, I just, you know, and, and I may be wrong, you know, I put England fourth and look, momentum is a big thing, right? But, but, but England being fifth, they, they have an easy group, right? I, I think it's one of the easiest groups. So I think they'll get out of it uh, on skate, which is important. You know, if they avoid injuries, they can rotate within games. Uh, because I think they'll get through that rather easily. So uh, this may move him up. But I just think that their time has come. Remember that part that I said that, you know, Southgate had a chance and that chance will not come around. I have yes. a feeling I have a feeling that this is it. There, you know, how, you know, those championships were different because, you know, we were coming out of uh, COVID. We all know that. Uh, it was supposed to be happening in, in numerous countries, but England played, what, six out of seven games or you know, almost every game they played at home and they had the final at home uh, and they didn't take advantage of that. And I think they'll pay the price for that. I, I think if they get to the final, it would be great, but I don't, I don't see that happening. So yeah, you don't see that happening, but you have four teams before them when they're the favorites for many along with France. So why don't you see it happening with the players that they do have? Uh, I just, you know, I mean, that, that loss of momentum uh, a little bit. I think they're very much dependent on Harry Kane, which is not a bad thing if he's available. Uh, if he's not, you know, we can hey, look, I'll, I'll wait and see, you know, they're, they're playing today, aren't they? I mean, you know, that, that, that last game without Harry Kane, you know, Ali Watkins still untested. There's not many, you know, not many chances to look at uh, uh, different combinations, are there, right? And knowing uh, Garrett Southgate, even if he had five more games, that's the issue with him, right? I sometimes have the same issue with Garrett Southgate going to United as I do uh, as a manager of England uh, because he sticks with his people. That's great for them. I would love to, love to have him a coach, as a coach and trust me. And regardless of how I play, you know, I play. You know, you look at Maguire's. I mean, for the longest time, he was like that with Sterling, who, who, who did great for him. Now he's out of favor for some reasons. But I think he's stuck in his way. And, and I think... Um, I think England will pay the price for that. 